we have the representations of the life cycle of two organisms. One picture depicts the life cycle of a butterfly, while the other shows the development stages of a human. Have you ever wondered how does this little caterpillar turn into a butterfly? Or even, how does such a small baby turn into an adult? Butterflies go through some spectacular life cycle transformations, that is, from a lowly worm into a glorious creature that floats on the breeze. On similar lines, humans also follow a developmental pattern. They go through a series of developmental stages, from the time of birth to the time they mature into an adult. And these transformations are mainly possible, all thanks to the process of cell cycle and cell division. We all know that each multicellular organism begins life in the form of a single cell. So how does a single cell get transformed into a large organism? To comprehend this, let's understand the concept of a cell cycle and cell division. Let's begin with their definitions. Cell cycle is a series of well-orchestrated steps including cell growth, duplication of genetic material and cell division usually resulting in two identical cells. In other words, a cell passes through various steps in order to grow, copy its DNA and finally split into either two or four new cells. This is cell cycle. And what exactly is cell division? As the name suggests, cell division is the process in which a single parent cell divides into either two identical cells or four cells, each with half the number of chromosomes. So can we say that the process of cell division is a part of the cell cycle? That's right. That's how it is. Now tell me one thing, do all the cells divide in the same way? Just think about it. The answer is a definite no, right? Every cell in our body has a different tendency to grow and divide. To be precise, some cells divide throughout their lifetime, while others do not divide once formed. For example, our skin cells have a high turnover rate due to constant wear and tear and divide very frequently. On the other hand, our nerve cells do not divide once formed. Now getting back to the cell cycle, as the name suggests, the process occurs in phases or stages, the series of steps that repeat in cyclic manner. But for our convenience, we majorly divide a cell cycle into two phases. The first phase is called the interphase and the next is the M phase, which represents either mitotic or meiotic phase. Let's have a quick look at these phases. The interphase prepares the cell for cell division, hence it's also called the preparatory phase. In this phase, the cell grows and makes a copy of its genetic material, the DNA to be precise. On the other hand, the M phase is the dividing phase of the cell cycle. It carries out the task of actual cell division. After going through a series of steps, the cell first divides the nucleus into two sets followed by the division of the cytoplasm. This gives rise to two identical daughter cells. And this process of cell division is called mitosis. Similarly, instead of once, a parent cell divides twice to give four daughter cells, each with half the amount of genetic material compared to the parent cells. This type of division is called meiosis, the one useful in the production of gametes. Now tell me one thing, will both the phases, the interphase and the M phase have the same time duration? Or will one phase last longer than the other? If yes, then which phase will need more time? Just think about it. Imagine we were to prepare a meal. The actual time required to cook the food is usually less compared to the time we take for preparations. That is, right from getting things from the store to keeping things ready for cooking, we consume a lot of time pre-cooking. The cell isn't an exception. For the most crucial and challenging tasks, like division of nucleus followed by cytoplasm, the cell takes a lot of time to prepare for these steps rather than the actual divisions. The interphase lasts much longer compared to the M phase. You will be astonished to know 
that the interface occupies more than 90% of the total time required for one cycle. And only the remaining less than 10% of the time is needed for the M phase to get the new cells formed. So all the important functions like growth, duplication of genetic material, synthesis of newer compounds and organelles, all of these are carried out in the interface. It is believed that the cells take up approximately 24 hours to complete one cycle. However, this duration can vary from organism to organism and from one cell type to the other. Later, at the end of the cycle, the new cells produced can start the exact same process all over again. That's the reason why it's called a cycle as it does not follow a linear pathway. Well, this was just an overview of the two major phases of a cell cycle. To know in detail about each phase and the substages in each phase, do watch our upcoming videos. <music>